It's no secret that light has power when it comes to dry eye disease. You've heard me talk about IPL in the past and its incredible ability to improve dry eye. But there's another player on the market utilizing LED light. The clinic version is called LLLT or low level light therapy. And then there's an at home version in LED red and blue light masks. But do these masks have any promise in dry eye care? Today I'll investigate. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to Eye School with me, Dr. D. Welcome, make yourself comfy and get ready to learn about light therapy for dry eye syndrome. Before we get started, this channel is all about eye education and I love creating this community of pupils. You can catch all previous iSchool episodes in the playlist that I've curated below. If you came here for dry eye and this video in particular, for instance, there's a plethora of videos already made. So I invite you to check those out and especially check out my IPL video that I did recently. But let's talk a little bit about LLLT. So it stands for low level light therapy, as I had said. Doctors will also refer to it as photobiomodulation. It's been studied for use in eye care for the past several years, and eye doctors are starting to offer it to their dry eye patients. These masks apply red or near infrared radiation using low power light sources, in this case, LEDs to promote tissue repair, decrease inflammation, and relieve pain. That makes a lot of sense if you think about dry eye from the perspective of having need for tissue repair, you know, the meibomian glands we've talked about so much undergoing changes in meibomian gland dysfunction. Dry eye is an inflammatory condition, so anything that's gonna decrease inflammation could potentially help and relieve pain. So a lot of you that have meibomian gland dysfunction blepharitis talk about how tender and sore your eyelids are. And so if there's truly a mask, a light mask, that can help with all of these signs and symptoms, that would be absolutely wonderful. So specifically, the type of dry eye disease that LLLT aims to treat is what is called evaporative dry eye or issues with those meibomian glands and their secretion. There are already some alternatives to LLLT, so warm compresses, that's the standby, thermal heat and expression therapies in office. So I personally do tear care. I've made a video about that before, but there's also Lipiflow and Ilux that employ that thermal heat plus expression, whether it's done by your doctor or by the machine itself. And then we've got IPL as another light therapy for meibomian gland dysfunction, lipid containing artificial tears, or even omega-3 fish oil, or doxycycline antibiotic therapy. So those are kind of the players in the MGD therapy market right now. But using LED or LLLT lights in eye care is new. It has been used in dermatology, however, for years to promote tissue repair, decrease inflammation, and provide that pain relief. However, when it comes to the specific treatment of dry eye as a disease, information is just starting to emerge about the benefits of using LEDs for dry eye and meibomian glands. The crux of the issue for me on whether LLLT and photobiomodulation are actually going to work lies in one particular nuance, and that is that regardless of a treatment device's output, the actual most critical measure is the effective dose of light that's delivered to the target tissue at the specified wavelength. So what I mean by that is these masks, and, and I have masks, these masks that you can buy commercially, the ones that you can get in your doctor's office, it doesn't so much matter what's coming off of the mask, but what actually makes it to the target tissue makes it to the skin. And this area is uncharted territory, but the skin is different than the meibomian glands. And so my biggest question is how much irradiation, how, how much light is needed, what strength of light is needed to actually be able to affect the meibomian glands in a positive way. This is precisely where we get into a hard time quantifying the actual therape therapeutic effect, especially when it comes to the over-the-counter over version of these masks, because it's not just how much light comes out of the mask, but how close do the LEDs sit to the skin? 
And are there enough LEDs in a location that's going to impact your meibomian glands in a positive way? And so when you look at the back, back of, for instance, this Dr. Gross eye care mask, um, you know, you only really have a couple of LEDs there. You can sort of pit the masks against each other and there's, you know, Dr. Lee did a really great video about the full face masks. I'll link it up above right here. But it does matter how, how close those LEDs sit. Now, I do like this mask because this is a really like nice, spongy, soft um, barrier between the lights and your face. And it actually does sit in pretty close to the skin. However, you can see with this mask, even totally aligned, it may be hitting my meibomian glands on the lower lid, but we don't have any LEDs affecting the upper lid. That's the thing. There is the over-the-counter version of the device. And so the questions to ask there are, how many lights are there? Where are they located? Are they actually in contact with my skin? And then there are the in-office treatments that your doctor is using. And so the big question is, what are the differences between those? So the in-office, the current in-office LED treatments are in a mask form. They're going to be either used standalone or some doctors are using them in conjunction with IPL. Red light is going to be primarily used for dry eye purposes, but the doctor might have a blue light or even a yellow filter as well. No protective eyewear is worn during these types of, um, not procedures, but treatments. Rather, patients are just kind of closing their eyes throughout the treatment. This is in contrast to IPL, which is what I have in my office. And for IPL, you have to use eye shields, and that's what I use in all of my treatments. So if you do have an aversion to eye shields, LED therapy may be better for you than IPL. Although the IPL shields, in my experience, just look scary, and then once we get them in, they're usually not as bad. But if that's something you're very averse to, then LED might be better. The clinical grade masks typically emit light at a wavelength around 633 plus or minus 10 nanometers with a power of 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So for a treatment time of 15 minutes, the energy density is 90 joules per centimeter squared over the treatment area. And that's to me the crux of the, the issue between at home versus in office is that it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter how much comes from the mask, it, it matters how much is absorbed by the skin. And the over-the-counter versions of the mask I've heard about are about one-tenth as efficacious as the in-office versions. To sum it up for you, LLLT therapy does work. We know it works on the skin. There's plenty of dermatologists on this, this platform talking about how the masks are actually a good thing and they don't do any harm. So you can certainly use red light masks in your home care. What I'm trying to figure out is what is the difference between at home for eyes and does it make an impact in dry eye or does it not really? And the research is just not there. I can tell you that the at-home devices, I don't think they, they don't hurt. They can't hurt anything. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the studies around that in a moment. But just kind of think about your LED therapy as being in office is gonna be very controlled, have a high level of energy. Um, we don't have all the data yet on how efficacious that truly is in treating dry eye, but you're gonna get a lot um, stronger therapy in office. And then if you wanted to maintain at home with an eye mask, it may or may not help your dry eye. It does help your skin. I mean, you know, it does good things for stimulating collagen and reducing wrinkles in your skin over some time. And so you're really not gonna do yourself any harm. So let's talk a little bit about how photobiomodulation works. And it's funny that I said that because we don't know. What we think is that light strikes the tissue and then it's absorbed by the mitochondria of cells. Remember the mitochondria are our powerhouses of our cells. And then this chain reaction occurs and more ATP, which is the energy, it's the gasoline, that's made and leads to endogenous heating. So light hits cells, cells receive, cells make power, power makes heat, oil melts. That's kind of a guess, but that's what we know right now. There haven't been any unfavorable reports on the safety of photobiomodulation therapy with regards to its use in the ocular, ocular surface. And that's a really important point is that, does it work? 
Maybe. Does it hurt you? No. So despite the safety of the devices so far, we don't have reliable evidence supporting the efficaciousness of its use in dry eye and meibomian gland dysfunction. And that's for the clinical grade devices. So when it comes to the at-home devices, the efficacy is expected to be even less, but the safety should be A-OK. -okay. So all this to say, and I know I'm talking a lot, but this has been a video I've wanted to make for a long time, and it's been just kind of difficult to wade through all the evidence and figure out what to say. But obviously there's a need for well-designed, adequately powered, randomized, controlled, and ideally masked clinical trials that address the question of standalone efficacy for photobiomodulation. Um, we need to know full specification of the device characteristics, the settings, the treatment details, um, because that's what's going to support the ongoing use of tissue-specific irradiation protocols that are actually going to help dry eye. To sum it up, I personally use this Dr. Gross skincare mask. I mean, I own it. I see no issues with using these devices at home, and dermatologists seem to agree with me. I do like that Dr. Gross's mask has FDA approval, um, but you know, ultimately do your research and it's definitely something you could look at using. If you've used an LED light mask at home for your dry eye therapy, I wanna hear from you down below. Um, obviously this isn't a mask controlled trial, but it's just really interesting to hear from patients out there in the real world that are trying dry eye therapies for themselves. So that is it for today's iSchool lesson. I hope it made sense and was helpful. I'll see you next time. Class is dismissed.